Okay. Um, welcome back, everyone. We will get started with the next section here. If there are no questions um, with regard to the earlier one, which I think we have already talked about. Okay. So let's let's just go ahead. The next topic here is about the church um, being the branches of the vine. And we know that Jesus uh, paints this very beautiful picture of uh, the vine and its branches. Uh, and, uh, you know, this again uh, is a relationship that God has with the believer. Um, and so it applies to the local church and we'll see uh, what insights we can gain from the um, the wine and its branches. The passage is from John chapter 15 verses 1 through 8 and it'll be good for somebody to read the entire passage. So would like to request one of us, uh, could you read the passage please? All the eight verses from 1 to 8. Um, Anita, are you are you able to read? Yes, uh, yeah. One minute, huh? Yeah, yeah, please. Sure. Third, third chapter, John three. There was a Pharisee named. Uh, John, uh, one second, Anita. Uh, this is John 15. You can read from John 15, verses 1 to 8. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Thank you. I am, <clears throat> I am the true vine. My father is a gardener. He cuts off every branch joined to me that does not bear fruit. He trims every branch that does bear fruit. Then it will bear even more fruit. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain joined to me just as I also remain joined to you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain joined to the vine. In the same way, you can't bear fruit unless you remain joined to me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain joined to me, and I to you, will bear a lot of fruit. You can't do anything without me. If you don't remain joined to me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and dries up. Branches like those are picked up. They are thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain joined to me, and my words remain in you, ask for anything you wish and it will be done for you. When you bear a lot of fruit, it brings glory to my Father. It shows that you are my disciples. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Anita. Yeah, it's a beautiful passage um, that talks about the life of God, you know, flowing through us and us being fruitful. So uh, let's look at it and we'll see how this applies to the local church. Here, we notice that the true vine or the source of life is the Lord Jesus. And the father, you know, he is uh, called as a wine dresser or he's the one who is working on the wine, on the branches. Uh, and the branches are connected to the vine. And these branches are us, God's people. Uh, so what are what are a couple of things that are happening here? One is connectedness. You know, we see that God says, uh, as long as the branch is connected to the the main trunk, it is alive and it is able to bear fruit. So there is an emphasis on connectedness. Now, for a believer, what does being connected mean? It means intimacy with God. So as long as we have and maintain intimacy with God. We can have everything 
that is flowing through the main trunk that is god himself everything that is in god can be released into us but for that the requirement is intimacy we are also told that if there is no intimacy then what happens you know the branch which is cut off or which is not connected to the vine it will dry up and it is good enough to be thrown into the fire so when there is no intimacy we are disconnected from the purposes of god you know from the guidance of god you know what god is speaking in the now into our hearts um what god is doing right now so there is that disconnect and uh, if we are completely disconnected then the, we are at a uh, we there is a danger of us falling away and that's that's what we see here so the first emphasis is connectedness and intimacy we can apply this to an individual we can also apply this to a church family we can apply this to a church community and um, we can see how to maintain that intimacy with god okay as pastors leaders ministers we can do our part you know in in nurturing uh, the the community into intimacy so we may want to um, teach god's word uh, to uh, bring understanding about god's word so that people have a grip on god's word they're able to spend time um, you know with god meditating on his word we can have times of worship you know where god um, where people are uh, able to experience god's presence and hopefully you know all of this will translate into their own personal lives as we disciple them and we teach them about their personal walk developing their uh, uh, you know their prayer life with god and all that uh, what happens you know they they will uh, stay connected they will develop in intimacy with god and uh, have all of the things of god uh, ministering to them so one aspect is connectedness then the second aspect we see here is that it's only when we are connected to god you know we are told that there is going to be fruit bearing so i'm just reading from verse 4 abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear of fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me so what is the criteria for bearing fruit abide in the vine again connectedness out of intimacy will come fruitfulness but god does expect fruitfulness verse 5 i am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and i in him bears much fruit for without me you can do nothing so god is expecting fruit okay uh, uh, how can we say that because verse 2 says every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away so god wants us to bear fruit and verse 8 it says by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit so you will be my disciples so god wants us to bear fruit what is fruit we can um, uh, look at several scriptures and come to the conclusion that fruit has to do with the outcome of our lives one outcome is uh, with regard to our character you know the fruit of the spirit love joy peace patience uh, you know kindness gentleness long suffering so galatians 5 verses 22 to 23 we see the reflection of god in our character and god expects that from us so as a believer and as a community of believers as people are journeying along um this is something you know, that must uh, come forth and people are growing in these things and they are uh, releasing that fruit of the holy spirit uh, which is talked about in galatians chapter 5 so you know that's how uh, the, there are uh, you know, the people of the world they say oh okay you know these believers uh, they will help you know they are they have a very compassionate heart um, uh, and there are many christian uh, people who have helped in times of need you know during floods and famines and things like that because the character of god is coming through uh, the believers are stepping out in love the believers are stepping out with encouragement and kindness and things like that so the character is coming forth uh, and, and yeah it can be seen in various situations um, through individuals and through the believing community right through some action that uh, some social action or 
in a response to uh, any matter but the character you you understand what i'm saying the character of god has to come through and that is fruit of the holy spirit now what else is fruit or what else is outcome of our lives the outcome of our lives is also the fulfillment of the purposes of god so as you and i we are growing in what god has called us to do uh, as we are um, you know becoming better at uh, releasing the gifts that god has uh, entrusted us with uh, as we are becoming better uh, in the calling right we we get a hold of the calling and you know we are we're living out that life for god that also is an outcome that's also is an outcome and god is glorified by that now outcome and fruit can also refer to the outcome of the ministry now in the life of jesus we saw how he revealed the glory of god so even us you know as we release uh, that glory um in various ways the supernatural power of god the works of god you now jesus said i do the works of the father if you don't believe me at least believe the works because they testify of me so the works testify of god uh, and uh, when a believer is doing the father's works even then you know we are bearing fruit for the kingdom we are bearing fruit as branches so god is looking for fruit all all of these uh, fruits must be seen in individual believers as well as a community of believers or you know you could say the local church and so we must encourage believers to move in this direction the second peter chapter 1 uh, there again peter encourages the believer to keep growing okay as when we are when we are abiding in god and his word is abiding in us there is a growth process there is a maturity you know that that we uh, are all moving towards and so peter adds he says that one must move forward okay uh, yes bear the fruit of the spirit but also develop in character now what does this character look like he he kind of uh, you know points out uh, certain things he says mm, giving all diligence add to your faith virtue so these characteristics must be seen in us there must be faith yes but there must uh, in addition to that be virtue in addition to virtue be knowledge in addition to knowledge self control perseverance godliness brotherly kindness love okay and in verse 8 second peter 1 verse 8 he says for if these things are yours and abound you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our lord jesus christ so this is also a path of fruitfulness that we are being shown maturing in god maturing in the things of god maturing in these characteristics um that have been listed so in all these ways we can reveal that we are being fruitful and we are making that journey with god and uh, that journey in a connected way okay, we we uh, obviously we cannot grow in these things unless uh, god's life is working in us and so we must remain connected we must remain intimate with god we must have his word abiding in our hearts we must um, you know uh, let the spirit of god work in us and that's when you know the fruit which the father is looking for that's what we read now the father is looking for fruit if there's no fruit what does he do he prunes uh, sorry he he uh, cuts cuts away right uh, but if there is fruit what does the father do verse 2 uh, john chapter 15 every branch in me that does not bear fruit okay, so if there is no fruit he takes away what if the branch bears fruit let's look at that and every branch that bears fruit he prunes that it may bear more fruit so what is the reward for bearing fruit very unlikely reward pruning that's what the father does so what does pruning mean pruning means purging it means cleansing it means sanctifying it means purifying so when god sees that a believer is walking in the ways of god you now some cleansing comes our way now god might minister through a word or god might uh, you know um, minister through a circumstance or in some way but what is he drawing us to he's drawing us to a greater commitment 
is drawing us to uh, you know um, greater revelation is he's drawing us to deeper depths in him so there's a cleansing that takes place in our lives or if you want to look at it this way basically it's like aligning yourself more and more to what god's heart is for us so yeah we were we were aligned uh, you know a couple of degrees but when we are aligned god says okay come on get little more aligned get little more aligned so god keeps bringing us and drawing us uh, you know closer and closer to himself uh, and uh, getting us into his purposes his dream for our lives so that's what the father expects he expects us to become more like him and that is when you know this this whole cleansing purifying sanctifying process um uh, is um we are taken through that uh, and it really pleases the father because when we go through the pruning or you know a plant when you prune it it grows better it uh, it it becomes you know more fruit bearing you you'll find more fruits on it you'll find more flowers because you have you got rid of all the unwanted leaves and unwanted uh, you know uh, things that are drawing away the energy of the plant and god channelizes or focuses our energy uh, into the things that glorify his name and that is why pruning is the reward for a fruit bearing believer and god is going to align us closer and closer you know more accurately to himself uh, and that's actually a good thing because when we align ourselves more to god when there is pruning cleansing in our lives what happens we are able to bear more fruit for his kingdom so these are all some of the insights that we can draw from john chapter 15 so in a practical way you know how can we use this in the context of the local church intimacy you know, emphasize intimacy we've talked about this when we said that the church is the bride so uh, uh, the relationship that christ jesus has with has with the church uh, is that of a bridegroom and a bride so there is that relationship of intimacy and even here the vine and its branches connectedness if we are disconnected you know there's no way uh, we can uh, live for god in fact it says without me you can do nothing so without god without jesus we can't do anything so intimacy the emphasis is on intimacy uh, and we must um, make room for that in our personal lives as well as in the church context uh, and uh, help people guide people to continue abiding in him so all the ministry that we do is targeted towards that okay bring people back um, back to the word you no know, back to his presence let them let them dwell with god and when they dwell with god and he dwells with them then the fruitfulness will begin to appear so intimacy is the first thing the second thing is check for fruitfulness now as a church uh, and as a, a body of believers mm, it's very easy for us to get caught up in activities okay? and it generally happens because people are passionate they're running after uh, ministry goals we are busy but is god looking for busyness or is he looking for fruitfulness the father we are told is checking for fruitfulness so that must awaken us to uh, the right kind of assessment from time to time we look at our ministry we look at um, you know the church and we see how fruitful are we you know um, how um, would we qualify if the father were to test us will he find us fruitful in character will he find us fruitful in the works of the father you know will he find us uh, fruitful in in fulfilling our purposes for him if not if we are just engaging in a lot of activities uh, and and thinking that yeah okay god is pleased by it then you know we we are not aligned uh, and and god is really not pleased with our busyness so check for fruitfulness and from time to time you know god might um, as we are assessing ourselves god might reveal that hey there are certain activities that uh, are not really productive so you know we won't we won't find it difficult to get rid of activities because our goal is fruitfulness uh, it, it's not the process but it is the progress so uh, 
look for fruitfulness and that is the key uh, even in church we can look at the things that we are doing and see is it really leading people to bear fruit for the kingdom if not yeah we can get rid of some of the activities then we must encourage everyone to bear fruit now what is god's expectation every branch that is connected see he prunes the branches that don't bear fruit so god wants branches that bear fruit which means individuals every individual we know that you know each person is called for a ministry uh, so uh, we as pastors leaders we it's our responsibility to see oh okay this is the vision over uh, this individual's life how can i um, how can i guide this person how can i mentor this person to move into the fullness that god has for this person so basically bear fruit you know guide them in that direction so that in the area where god has called them they are fruitful uh, and every believer for that matter it's a responsibility of the leadership to uh, channelize you know their energies for fruit bearing uh, and so again you know the kind of mentoring we do the leadership we provide the way we uh, we steer things it it must ensure that every branch is able to bear fruit it's not that only the pastor should bear fruit and uh, that's all but every branch should bear fruit okay what else uh, some other practical uh, things are the cleansing aspect okay so the cleansing as aspect so cleansing aspect refers to uh realigning ourselves uh now there can be times when god uh, puts a word on our hearts and that may have to do with um setting right uh some ungodly standards okay some ungodly standards in the community uh ungodly attitudes um among people or ungodly lifestyle so anything that is drawing us away from living that uh, holy life that god has called us to uh as a pastor and a leader you know maybe god puts some words in our hearts and says okay you have to preach these messages or you have to guide in this way so we must be open for that we must be open uh, and uh, if it's a season of purging cleansing sanctifying that god is bringing upon the community then we should know how to steward that and lead people into it because what happens after pruning more fruitfulness but if we hold on to those things which you know god is asking us to get rid of then you know we we will not be able to uh glorify god so seasons of cleansing and purging uh in every community will go through that and as pastors and leaders we must know how to um guide people during those times now what are some of the challenges some of the challenges could be um you know we talked about intimacy and intimacy uh would require us to focus on god you know give god our time wait on him hear from him and and for some of us who are very action oriented um it's not easy we don't want to wait and you know soak in his presence and all just tell me what to do great commission okay go evangelize i'll do it so it's that whole balance uh we said we talked about this even when we said that the church is the bride there is a uh, there is a go which is the great commission but there's also a come invited into god's presence there's a balance so again the people who are action oriented uh, this whole thing about um, intimacy can be hard to digest and also the truth that when you abide in me you will bear much fruit you know it it's like for the logical mind uh, that doesn't make sense when i'm in action i can see an outcome but if there's no action then how can i see ministry outcomes so we we uh, get very restless okay my time i cannot spend my time just waiting on the lord i have things to do i have to get uh, stuff done so you know that there's that whole struggle uh, uh, but yes you know we have to learn uh, to be still uh, in god's presence and uh, be with him uh, and we have a promise when we are intimate with god without me you can do nothing but when we are with him there is a by product automatically uh, actually in a sense <laughs> there is fruitfulness even without us striving so much and working so hard there will be fruit seen 
in and through our lives for the one reason that we have learned the key of intimacy okay so uh, that abiding and intimacy can be difficult for uh, many of us so that, that's where you know we we um, have to work on it personally and also guide people and help them understand it's not a waste of time it's not at all a waste of time you know the time which is spent in prayer the time which is spent in god's presence it's never wasted time in fact you know uh, um that's where our fruitfulness comes from uh, so that is a challenge then uh, moving on yeah we said fruitfulness god is looking for fruitfulness now to a certain extent um it's possible that a community is fruitful uh, and they are doing god's works they are displaying god's character but you see when we read john chapter 15 it almost seems like the father is uh, progressively looking for fruitfulness he keeps pruning the the vine and he keeps making sure that it keeps it gets better and better and better okay similarly when we start checking for fruitfulness in our lives uh for some people in the church in the community again what we said about you know mount zion uh, for some people it will be like hey you're asking for too much i'm doing a little for god and just let it be you know let me be this is all don't expect more uh, but you know, that is the direction in which god is leading us throughout our, our journey in life god wants us to keep increasing in him he wants to keep maturing uh, in him he wants us to keep being fruitful in him so there's always that cleansing that purging more fruitfulness cleansing purging more fruitfulness so you know it's like a loop a cycle it keeps repeating itself and uh, uh, so the the people in our community may find us stuck on this and say what is this every time you know you're expecting more fruitfulness more fruitfulness we're already making an impact can we not just you know settle down and be comfortable right now but you know it doesn't work like that but we can remind them that look you're not doing this for anybody but this is what god desires he will be glorified as we progress with him so uh, let's all strive for greater fruitfulness on the journey so encourage people to continuously be fruitful the next thing is times of purging and cleansing you know as a community uh, this also can be challenging because god can ask us to um, set some standards right um, you know change the way we are doing things at church so for the community it can be hard right maybe the pastor has decided okay fine you know we will do it like this but for the congregation it it can be hard you know change is always difficult and uh, uh, you know we we've talked about it we will talk about it mm, so moving people uh, you know in this process in the seasons of purging and cleansing maybe i'll just give you one example um for cleansing maybe god leads the pastor to uh, call for uh, uh, a season of of seeking him let's say 40 days okay and the pastor just uh, shares this with the church and says okay we are going into a time of prayer of worship of meditating in god's word every day in the evening we are going to meet uh, at at this place and uh, everyone come let's worship the lord let's uh, wait in his presence god will do a new work in our midst that's a season of cleansing right where god wants to do a work in the body but for a lot of people they might resist it and say what is this you know why should we do this we're already spending so much time in god's presence um and you know to accept things like this uh, can be very challenging so as a leader as a pastor how are we going to um navigate you know through these these uh, through times of resistance okay that can come from the people or the congregation okay all right so uh, i think i'll stop here we've got the essence of what it means to be uh, the branches connected to the true vine okay so any thoughts and questions uh, we can take that up now anita has a question how we would know we are fruitful what kind of fruit shall be so anita i think i answered that no uh, what kind of fruit in character in the father's works um so 
those are the that is the fruit which we are looking for uh, and how would we know that we are fruitful i think how will we know that we're fruitful the father's works i, I think that's quite easy to tell you know, we can see that god's power is being released through our lives now coming to the maturing part and the character part that's a little tricky you know it's only when the mm, uh, the going gets rough or you come into a situation right there there you are able to see the your character uh, like you know i might think that oh uh, i'm so humble but when there is a situation where uh, i'm not recognized it might deeply hurt me that hey i'm not getting recognition that's when i know hey actually i'm not humble at all you know there's so much of pride sitting on the inside of me so uh, i think testing for the character fruit it's a little more uh, difficult anita does that does that help okay okay i'm not uh, sure if anita is it clear okay all right let's move, move on ashri kumar uh, you have a question yes pastor pastor i just yes, want please to please go know. ahead thank you thanks a lot um when um, when you are saying that um, you know waiting upon the lord and especially in the ministry and sometimes you feel that uh, you have to jump into something and uh, because the things are not happening but um i just want to know that um like um how we able to uh um you know um recognize that that uh, even if we are waiting and um, and the lord wants us to do something like you know, uh, like as you waited for like for more than 2 years or 3 years and 4 years now god is now you have got getting an inspiration to get into uh you know to start a business or uh, you know parallelly you start the ministry or something like that um how you able to uh how we can able to uh you know uh know that that is from the lord or that is not from our emotions or or desperation or you know or that is not from because of a lot of anxiousness is there in our life and uh, we are struggling that things are not happening the way how we thought when we step into the ministry and uh, now the nothing is happening and um, um and this is not the desire of the flesh and how we will able to you know um uh, differentiate that this is a flesh or this is a spirit that what is expecting what is moving is and moving in us saying that now you start a business or you now you parallel you do something because i i also saw so many people who are jump, step into the ministry or um, they get into uh, you know the ministry or the, they become a um, you know the who that they are intercessors or something like that then they come to a conclusion they say that no i don't have to work anymore um, you know i don't have to do anything now i only have to from morning till evening or night whole night i have to sit and pray and uh, then i see their lives getting more worst in finances in every area where there is no productivity in their life and by seeing them sometimes i feel that what they are doing is right or is it the real way of waiting the lord or what i said is like uh, you know you waited for something and nothing is uh, you are not seeing the way how uh, that that completeness you are not seeing and now you are feeling that yes uh, i have to parallelly to do something uh, rather than wasting my time so i just want to know that um, how uh what is the right way to identify that it is from the spirit or it's from the flesh thank you pastor mm, okay thank you shri kumar it's a difficult question it's a very difficult question actually yeah mm, uh so see initially when you were you were asking about when uh, if you don't mind if you could mute please because i can hear an echo yeah thank you yeah so initially when you were asking about um, uh you know one waiting on the lord and then deciding okay now i'm going to step into uh ministry after having waited on the lord how do we know that's a question about confirmation so we need a confirmation uh that this is what 
you know god is calling us to do uh, and for that i'll just give you one simple scripture mm. yeah this is second corinthians 13 and verse 1 this is like you know most basic when we make decisions um by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word shall be established so two or three witnesses so when we make big decisions like this okay i'm going to step into full time ministry or this is uh, the call of god on my life i'm going to move in this direction there's nothing wrong with getting a confirmation and it's a question about god's guidance uh, so there is an apc publication called god's guidance you can read that there are many ways in which god speaks to us and through each one of them we can get a confirmation so we can be pretty clear that okay fine this is what god wants me to do let me get into full time ministry so that was one aspect of what shri kumar was uh, asking about the other thing is uh, as we are in the ministry now you're asking me there are people who decide to wait on the lord the whole time okay and uh, they don't engage in any kind of an income generating activity uh, and so um, they go through difficulty you know where's the balance waiting on the lord and going ahead and doing some stuff so this is challenging shri kumar because one uh, has to truly hear from god okay because i know of people who have made such a decision of um, waiting on the lord Mm, and one particular brother he's called for intercession uh, and uh, it's 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 different because he spends all his time only in prayer and worship and all but the thing is um he has i mean he has studied and he has a degree and all of that so he can do very well in the workplace but he senses that his call is just intercession so you know he's staying home and praying that's what he does the whole time but how can we discern whether that's the right thing or not look for the fruit so this particular person you know now opportunities are beginning to come his way uh, during the lockdown you know there were people who asked him to share the word and you know do stuff and so you can see that there is fruit god is moving things um as he is being obedient to what god has told him to do and it's quite rare shri kumar to have Uh, you know people like this who say okay i will not do anything else i'm only going to engage in the practical way of doing things is we can start off you know serving god if god has not told you okay you quit your job if you've never heard that word you do the ministry you uh, also do the um, the work the assignment that god has given as time progresses and as we continue to engage with god what happens is um you'll you'll begin to see doors shutting doors opening and god very clearly leading us into a full time role at least that's what happened in my case right as a volunteer i started and then the ministry was becoming more and more and more and more i couldn't handle my 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 work so i had to come to a place of decision i di- discussed with my family and i said look i'm choosing this because i feel like god is telling me to get into full time ministry so i think that will be a practical way of uh, uh, you know making decisions unless god has given you a clear word to stay and you know just pray do all that the practical thing to do is do both till such time when he clearly directs you into a full time role uh, i hope uh, it gives some light on what you're asking yes pastor thank you thanks a lot Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. Yes, uh, and, and I saw some more hands go up. Uh, Kennedy, did you want to ask a question? Your hand went up, and then yeah, hello. Oh, no, yes, thing. yes, Kennedy. Yes. He's waiting period also seen as a try uh, as a pruning period, waiting on the Lord. That period of waiting, but mm. it's a mm. pruning period. Hmm. Yeah in the pruning period we are waiting on the lord Is it okay is it, is it in order can it be treated that way Uh So while we are waiting is god pruning us is Yes 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 
Uh, yeah, that yes, sir Kennedy. Of course, you know when we're waiting on the Lord, we know that you know He works in us, right? So He's changing our hearts. He's working on our attitude. That cleansing is coming in. So yeah, that's true. The cleansing is happening. Yes, um, uh, yes, uh, Harrison. Thank you. Um, I want to ask this question: How is it possible to? To do full time ministry at the same time work. That's my question. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, uh, Harrison, there are several people who do that, uh, and uh, you know, I think Pastor also, if if you know a little bit about his background, uh, he was running a company. Um, I think the company shut down only. I don't. I don't know exactly which year, but maybe what. Five six years ago, but till then, pastor was running a company and leading the church at the same time. Yeah, does that answer your question? Okay, like we, like you said, you know, he was running the company, but is he still running the company now? Ah, uh, no, no, he he closed the company because that was part of his plan that eventually he will um you know move completely into ministry and it happened for a couple of reasons he decided at at one point that now is the time to make the transition so he closed the company and then now he's completely into into the ministry work okay thank you yeah yeah thank you so uh pastor for yes, yes, Maggie. Just yeah. to follow up to Harrison's uh, question, I believe that if the church cannot support the pastor and uh, the ministers uh, and the ministers have skills to to earn money to support their lives, they should work at the same time uh, doing ministry. Mm -hmm. Yes, Maggie, that's that's uh, correct. We uh, see that in Paul's life, isn't it? He was a tent maker. So even when he met uh, uh, Aquila, Priscilla, they were all tent makers. So that was common among them. They were teachers of the word, and they also had a uh, skill which they used for income generation. So yeah, nothing wrong with that. I just to yes. add into what Mangi is saying, uh, mm -hmm. you know, when we look at our church now, you know, you have you know workers in the church. You have the ushers, you have um, the musicians, and the rest of them. Mm. And it's more, it's more like you know, it's a bit difficult, you know, to to pay them or maybe take mm. care of their wealth. And the way it's now looking, it's more like you know, every everyone you know has to do what he or she wants to do for God, you know, without any mm. form of payment. But, mm. you know, I believe that if there's anyone that is serving in the church, the welfare should be taken care of. Mm. And if they mm. must pay attention to their service, you know, in the church, then their welfare should be taken care of. But when we look mm. at it now, or maybe from where I'm coming from or from where I am, it's more like it's a taboo, you know, for you to come and demand for a ransom you know, or demand for a pay. For you doing something on you know working in the church. And just like you know, we cited, you know, the case of Paul. You know, Paul, you know, when we look at it, you know, if we look at look at it carefully, till you know the end of his uh, ministry, he was still a tent maker. So I want to still believe that it is possible, you know, to still do something and still do ministry. It all depends on the approach and you know, how we manage what we are doing so that, you know, it does not hinder us, you know, from following the instructions, you know, God has given us to carry out. So I don't know if you could just throw more light, you know, when it comes to workers in the church and being paid. And yeah, the rest good of question. It. Yes, thank you, Harrison. Uh, again, good question there. So the way we would look at this is... Uh, if someone's engaging in ministry, um, I mean, the way I would look at it is that uh, if someone's engaging in ministry and uh, the the responsibility is 
such that they are unable to earn an income you know in, in any other way then yes you know we can we can uh, consider um paying them uh, I, i'll just give you one practical way here at apc uh, we have we have a church staff uh, and i don't know the exact numbers but you know it it's not a huge number i think it must be around 20 or something so that's the full time you know paid staff of the church but we have hundreds of volunteers i don't know again uh, the last time i heard the numbers was some 300 volunteers in our five locations so volunteer means that they don't get paid but they still serve and and that's the church culture which we have here so we just serve we volunteer um uh, and you know as i shared with you you know my my example so i had a job i had a full time job and i was serving as a uh, an associate pastor for one of our locations for uh, a long time and uh, the circumstances were such that there was a change happening in my workplace and even personally i wanted to spend more time uh, to serve god and there was an opportunity in church as well you know the missions role was open and uh, at that point nobody was taking it up so it all just kind of fit very well and i made the transition from a volunteer to a paid person um uh, only when There, there was no other way. Like, if I engage myself in so much ministry, I wouldn't have the time to earn. Uh, so that's when you know the the payment kind of started. So that's that's uh, how it's happened for me. And even here at APC, we have paid roles which are fewer as compared to volunteers. So there are a lot of people who serve as volunteers. They still keep their job, and you know they are able to put in that kind of time, and it doesn't uh, really affect the work which they are doing. Yeah. Yeah, and I am sure I can add more to that, Harrison. But uh, just for uh, paucity of time, maybe I'll stop with that. Um, uh, and I hope it's okay with you. Um, maybe via email, you know, I can send you a few more um, reasons why we would choose to pay somebody in ministry. Is that okay, Harrison? Yes, you know, thank you. Um, because yeah. you know, also, if if we look at the case of you know the Levites. You know, one reason you know that you know the tithing you know came in too was yeah. to see that all that was working in the house of God you know we are being taken care of. So, yeah, sure. I I understand where you're coming from, uh, but yeah, I will share my uh, additional thoughts on that. I'm sorry to interrupt you because Christopher is waiting, and we have like very little time before we close. So, uh, Christopher, uh, please go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, actually, I have two questions. Uh, one is, um, uh, you know, in reference to uh, that, the the Bible uh, uh, reference about you know, for without me you can do nothing. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, again, this could be you know, just uh, you know a, a person, a personal view who who could be either believers or even non-believers who are demonstrating mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know uh, gifts of the spirit. Mm. are doing you know uh, you know financially well and um, you know uh, exhibit uh, you know a lot of uh, godliness um but without um, you know there may not be believers also you know um uh, for example so i just wanted to you know to qualify that that statement you know for with, without me you could do nothing um so that uh, because i i guess the you know, the world view would be that you know uh, we can still do it not quite a lot um yeah so that is the first question and the the second one is with regards to the uh, again the biblical uh, reference about uh, uh, you know casting out a uh, casting out a branch and uh, you know uh, if anyone does not abide in me so in a, in a in a local church context um would there be circumstances where um you know people who uh you know not abiding with uh, with god and also you know with certain uh, principles of of a church would they be actually asked to you know to leave the church for example uh and you know get cast out so i just wanted to you know get your view on that uh yeah sure sure christopher yeah thank you good questions again so the answer to the first one is 
a lot of good works can be done christopher uh, but the father's works are what we are referring to when we say the fruit which a believer must bear that glorifies god we are saying that god becomes the source of those good works which the father wants us to do so the father's works can the world people of the world do good good works who don't belong to god of course they can but they are not necessarily the father's works that glorify the father okay and you know there are other other things uh, as jesus said there will be people who will do good things in the name of god but he'll say oh i didn't know you so the emphasis there again is on intimacy and relationship with god so that is one thing the second one uh, the answer whether people would be put away answer is yes okay and i will qualify this when we uh, talk about uh, church discipline so there is a there is an entire section on church discipline uh, when we talk about that you, know, you will have clarity there are certain um, there could be certain um, uh, you know cases where it is required for us to tell someone you know that okay for whatever reason uh, that yeah you you would need to leave yeah so it is possible but we'll deal with that uh, in the church discipline class is that okay christopher oh yes thank you yeah sure sure but one thing i'll add again these instances are few and far between very 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 rare okay so let me just add that i'll pray and let's close i know you have another class to get to <laughs> heavenly father we thank you lord for giving us this time in your presence in your word father even as we uh, engage in your word lord we thank you lord we thank you for all that you're doing in our hearts all that you're doing in our lives and father god prepare us lord to be uh, uh, lord fruit bearing branches lord that our lives and uh, lord our fruit might glorify your name lord i commit every single one uh, every every single person on this call into your hands lord we commit the rest of the day lord we pray that you will go before us strengthen us lord and lead us in jesus name we pray amen amen and thank you everyone god bless you have a wonderful day and we will connect you, again pastor. next thank week you. Yes. thank you thank pastor. you thank you thank you bye thank you pastor. thank you bye Thank you thank you everyone